Hey y'all, I want to show you today how to make your six motor drive work in autonomous, how to make it drive and turn in autonomous using the block coding. I got a few questions on my video about how to make a six motor drive work in driver control about how you would actually make it go in autonomous. And I want to show you how that works. It's actually way easier than making it go in driver control. So when you open up your blocks project, it's going to look something like this. And what we're going to do first is we are going to open up our devices and go ahead and add our controller. And then we're going to go ahead and see how there's no six motor drive option here. We need to add all of our motors independently with this motor device right here. So we just click it, click the port, it's on. I like calling my motors L1, L2, L3, R1, R2, and R3. And they're obviously going to be a blue cartridge in there. And done. And we're just going to do this for all of our motors. And depending on how you have your motors laid out, you might need to click on some of them and click this little reverse slider right here to go ahead and reverse the direction of some of those motors. So I might need to reverse my third right motor, and then maybe I'll need to reverse um, potentially my first and second left motor. It's going to be opposite on one side versus the other because one side your motors are facing one way and the other side your motors are merely facing the other way. So now that we've added our motors in our devices, we're going to go ahead and create a my block. And what a my block is, is just kind of like a recipe. It's a list of things that your robot's going to do when you tell it to do something. If I tell you to go to the store and get something, there's a lot of steps in there. you got to walk outside, go to the car, turn on the car, drive to the store, pick up the thing, pay for the thing, and bring it all the way back home. When you do a my block, it's the same idea. We need to tell it what we're going to call it. If we told it go to the store or whatever, we're going to tell it, in this case, we're going to tell it drive forward. And what it's going to do is it's going to do its whole big list of things when we tell it to just drive forward. And we're going to do a pretty simple set of things here. We're just going to tell it to spin all the motors forward for uh, the amount of degrees we tell it to. But you could tell it to do a lot more complex of a drive command or a turn command. And that is definitely very doable, even in blocks as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit drive. We're going to call it drive. And we're going to go ahead and add an input number here. And we're going to call this one degrees. And what this is going to do is this is going to drive forward for a certain number of degrees. And you can put a negative number in to drive backwards. And so you can, you can see that we have this drive block down here. I could just put this in here. And the goal is to make it so that way when I type in 100 in here, it'll drive forward 100 degrees. Right now, there's nothing under here, though. So as soon as I say drive 100, it'll be like, OK, what do I do? It'll just do nothing. What I need to do here is go up into motion. And what we're going to do is we are going to spin our motors forward. We're going to spin each motor forward for not 90 degrees, not some number of degrees, but the number we put in here. And how we get that number, that number we put in here actually is this degrees block right here. You can see it says drive, and that's the number we put in here, right here. So that block is going to be the number that we put in here. So this right here, this would say spin L1 forward for 100 degrees. And what we're going to do here is we are going to copy this and just make a whole bunch of copies of this block for our left side. And then we're going to go ahead and make some for our right side and put the degrees in each one. And then we can make some for our right side. And we're going to, we, we need six of them, one for each motor. So we have here one for each motor. There we go. And one more thing we have to do here. Right now, it's going to spin our L1 motor forward, and then it's going to wait till it's done, and then spin our L2 motor forward. What we do here is we click this little arrow, and that will actually make it move on to the next block before it's finished the first block. So it'll start right here. It'll start all five of these blocks, and then wait for the sixth one to be done. And what that will effectively do is start driving on all six motors, and then wait for this last motor, which will finish at the same time as all the other motors, to be done, and then it will move on to the next command. So this is our drive block. And now let's go ahead and create a turn block. It's going to be the same concept. We're going to go ahead and make a block. We're going to call this one turn. Oh, we're going to call it turn. We're going to add an input number here. And we're going to call this one degrees, because we're going to turn for a number of degrees. And there we go. We have our block here. And I guess generally it's not a good idea to have the same name for driving and turning. Maybe driving should have been for distance or something like that. But we can fix that later. What we're going to do here for turning is 
we are going to make it so that way when we grab this turn block here, we want it to turn 90 degrees when we put 90 in there. So when we put 90 in here, this whenever it sees this degrees, that's from the turning, that's going to turn 90 degrees when I put 90 in here. So how we're going to do that, the same exact way we did all these, except I can, here I can duplicate these and actually just bring them down here. And what we're going to do here, delete all these degrees. This is why you don't use the same name for the top, for the drive and the turn input number, because then they can get kind of confusing. What we're going to do here, these degrees are different than these degrees. So that's why you don't use the same one. Um, what we're going to do here is grab the degrees from the turn and put them in all six of our spin motor forward. But since we're turning, we actually need to spin some of our motors in reverse. So we need to spin half our motors forward, half our motors reverse. So we're spinning our left ones forward, our right ones reverse. And what that should do is turn our robot to the right. Now, that's all the code we need for our turn. Now all we do is, when we put turn 90 in here, it should turn the robot 90. Now this isn't using any inertial sensor or anything, so there's a good chance that both our drives and our turns won't be perfect, but they'll at least give you a start to pick up a few rings, maybe grab a goal in autonomous if you don't have an autonomous. And there's a lot more advanced stuff you can do, but this is a good place to get started for that kind of stuff. So I hope this was helpful in helping you just get started with an autonomous program. If you don't have one or something like that, you just want to you know, get off the line, grab a goal, grab a ring, whatever, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.